Giants loop. Color guard, halt. Color guard, prepare to post the colors. Color guard, post the colors. Will you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please join me in the scout oath and law. On my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to God and my country to obey the scout law, to other people at all times, to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. A scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. Two. Hello and welcome to the Eagle Scout Fort Water for 2.47's Fine Young Men. Ian Hageman, Sam Rister, and Austin McIntosh. Nice to see you all. Uh, it has been a long journey for these guys. They have all worked very, very hard. But something some of you may not know about Eagle Scouts. Um, the highest rank in Boy Scouting is the Eagle Scout. They have to work very hard. They have to go through seven conferences with the Scoutmaster and Boards of Review of the Adult Committee. They have to have earned 21 merit badges. They have 16 months in leadership positions. They have to have camped for at least 24 nights. They have to propose, plan, and carry out an Eagle Scout work project, which is the equivalent of being a project manager and foreman all rolled into one for a construction project. And that's a pretty tall order for any kind of youth, um, which is why only 6% of Boy Scouts ever earn the Eagle Scout rank. And these three fine young men all managed to do so. Let's not lean on that apparently. <laughs> 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 um, um, well, let's go on. Mr. Derek Bovenkamp, our fine, fine district commissioner, well, please come up. Thank you, Lambs. So, um, as a Eagle Scout and former Troop 7 Scout of myself, uh, I am pleased and honored to uh, convene and open this Eagle Scout Court of Honor on behalf of the Whatcom District, Mount Baker Council, and the Boy Scouts of America. Thank you, Derek. And can we please have Reverend Seth J. Thomas for our invocation? Greetings. Uh, on behalf of the Scout Troop 4007, which is housed at St. James Presbyterian Church, which I am uh, honored to serve as pastor, I'd like to say thank you for having me here, and I'm so excited to get to be a part of this time uh, with these young men. Um, I am uh, currently the pastor at St. James, which has housed the uh, 4007 troop for almost a hundred years in our uh, congregation's building. Um, we have served as the charter for the troop and continue to love and support and care for you all as you use our space. We're so glad to have you there, and it's really an honor to get to be a part of witnessing the work that these three young men have put in. Um, I am also here and excited to be here on behalf of Sam Risser. Uh, I got to know Sam a few years back um, through church uh, ourselves. We played music together. Sam is an extraordinary young man, and I'm honored to get to be here uh, and celebrate him. Uh, would you please join me in prayer as we prepare our hearts to uh, respond to the good work that is going on in these men's lives and uh, send them forward beyond this day? Would you pray with me? Good God, God of creation, God that we honor with our whole selves as we are formed in you. God, we ask that you would be with us as we honor these young men today for the hard work that they have put in, for the character and the integrity that they have been formed in through the scouting work. And Lord, we ask that you would send them on beyond this day with this honor to be leaders in our country, our state, our city, our churches, our life that we share together. 
And we trust that you are calling each of these young men into amazing things. And so we ask that we would be the people who could support them and guide them and be with them. I pray all of this and say, Amen. 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 So, um, at one of the most recent scout meetings, I was working with one of the younger scouts. And he is currently working on his scout badge. And part of that scout badge is learning how scouting works especially in, in, in these steps of advancement. So basically, it breaks down to four things. You learn a skill, whether it be tying knots, cooking, any number of different things. You're tested by an older scout, or an assistant scout master, scout master, or another adult. And then you are reviewed uh, for rank. You're reviewed by the board, which are members of the parent committee. And then finally, you're recognized with at a court of honor, you're presented with a badge, um, a new rank, and that sort of thing. So as youth, this is your last formal recognition. Okay? But these steps of learning, testing, being reviewed and being recognized don't end here. Okay? You'll continue to learn new skills constantly you will continue to be tested. And people will continue to review what you do, especially when they find out that you're an Eagle Scout. You'll have to review yourselves as well. Did I do what I should have done? Did I do my best? Eagle Scouts working on their projects Last year alone, volunteered two and a half, excuse me, eight and a half million hours. Eight and a half million hours. You can almost say that's priceless. But they actually have a price for a value of volunteer time rate, 24.14 an hour. What's that? A lot. A lot. <laughs> Over $200 million worth of service that you've given to your communities last year. So I'm glad to see that you have given some also, maybe not quite two and a half million, uh, but uh, at least a little bit towards that. Um, could I please have Mr. Ian Hayden? that I would like to touch on today, um, which were three main trips that I took in my scouting career. The first one was my 50 mile hike um, that I went on with the rest of my patrol, including Sam. And the first day was quite a struggle. Um, I started out and I was 67 pounds and not very tall. So my pack was 31 pounds, which is uh, more than a third of my body weight at the time, which I think you're supposed to carry about a third, but no matter. Well, it wasn't matter actually. I, I struggled the first day um, adjusting to altitude and just adjusting to carrying 30 pounds was, was a struggle. But eventually we got over a hill after stopping every 15 minutes, which isn't supposed to happen either, but it does. And once over the hill, after struggling through um, the climb, and on the descent, we saw a wolverine, which is actually pretty rare to see anywhere in the world, but especially uh, in the North Cascades. And after I saw this wolverine, I knew that the rest of the trip would be okay, because there would be things worth seeing at every step of the way. The second day was nearly twice as long as the first day, but a lot of it was downhill, so it wasn't so bad. As the trip got on, um, the going went easier. My pack weighed less, and I think I got stronger as well. On the penultimate day, we actually hiked two days worth of hiking in one day so that we could get out sooner because we reached our campsite at 10.30 in the morning, which was four hours earlier than on any other day. And on that day, I understood that 
if you work hard early, the going gets easier. And this was kind of a theme within my scouting career. The next big event that I went to was the 2013 National Scout Jamboree, which I went to with my brother, my dad, and two other Troop 7 Scouts. The Jamboree was a big trip. Um, it was the first one at the Summit Bechtel Reserve, which is a scouting property in West Virginia. There was all sorts of high adventure there, from mountain biking to uh, mile-long zip lines, and my favorite was actually skeet archery shooting. Um, discs got launched and you got to shoot at moving targets with archery, which is not common unless you're hunting, which I've never done. The Jamboree was an interesting experience. Uh, it was there with 40,000 other people, and we were camping in a field, which uh, became a mud pit by the end. <laughs> I'd never camped in a place with Wi-Fi before, so, <laughs> and charging stations. That was certainly a surprise. And the final trip that I went on was the Bowron Lakes trip, um, which was I believe eight days and 72 mile canoe trip, which I went on with Christoph, Sam, and all three of our fathers. The fourth day, or maybe it was the third day, was the most spectacular. Um, we reached our campsite in the middle of the afternoon, and Christoph and I set to fishing. And unfortunately, all that we caught was sticks and seaweed. But we made the most of it and made a Zen garden on the beach. <laughs> Quite nice. Later that evening, um, as it was about to get dark, um, and most of us were already in our tents, uh, the Rissers, which were outside, um, yelled that the northern lights were, were happening at that time. So we got, out, we got out of bed to watch that, and that was the first time I had seen the northern lights. So that was a surreal experience. Bowron was, uh, in some ways, a different trip because it was the end that was the hardest part. Um, we encountered a serious headwind on the final day, and um, it seemed like we weren't making a whole lot of progress. <laughs> but eventually we got to our destination, and it showed that with persistence, uh, you can really achieve anything. I'd like to thank um, many of the people who have helped me uh, along my scouting career. <coughs> Um, all of the merit badge counselors. I would not have been able to do it without your help. Um, I'd like to thank my parents. Um, they've been with me every step of the way and often went on uh, trips. And Even if I wasn't going on the trips, sometimes they would still support um, other scouts as well. I'd like to thank um, the scoutmasters for their time uh, at the meetings and outside of the meetings. I'd like to thank all of the people on the committee. Uh, oftentimes we don't see their works directly, but it's definitely a very important thing to the troop continuing to run. Uh, I'd like to thank my brother for um, providing a pathway for me to follow. Uh, in some ways, it felt like an obligation. Not <laughs> <laughs> to my brother, but it happened. So I would like to do, introduce uh, Sam Risser for his speech. Mr. Strom, who can't be here today, 
uh, Mr. Kogan, and uh, special thanks to Mr. Leedy, who's been with me since first grade in my tiger den. Um, I want to also thank people who are here who know me from Birchwood Presbyterian Church, uh, who are here, um, that they're the beneficiary of my Eagle Scout project. Um, so I want to thank my pastor Greg, I want to thank Seth again, who no longer goes to the church, but how to remember. Um, anyways, without all of yours, without your cheerful support, I don't know if I would have finished my project as fast as I did. And it was just nice to know that I had so many friendly faces and hands uh, standing behind me. Um, I want to thank all my fellow scouts, all of you guys sitting there in the third and the fourth row. Um, you're my brothers, you're my friends, and in more recent times, you're also my workforce. <laughs> so, thanks for showing up to my work parties. You played an integral role in helping me out there, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you all move on towards your own ego ranks. And lastly, I want to thank my mommy and my daddy. <laughs> Say hi, mommy and daddy. Hi, mommy and daddy. <laughs> and my sister, who are here in the front row. Um, they've been here through everything with me, and uh, they've been nothing but supportive the entire way. So, thank you guys. Um, so next I want to talk about what I've done in Scouts. So I'm just going to throw out some quick statistics. Throughout my time in Scouting, I've participated in four Pinewood Derbies. I've advanced in rank 12 times. I've made less than $100 in popcorn sales, yet somehow raised 3300 to attend the 2017 National Scout Jamboree. Uh, I earned 25 merit badges. I've seen eight moose, I've attended five different scout camps, I've spent two weeks completely off the grid, and I've hoisted God knows how many Christmas trees into the back of a rusty trailer <laughs> on a cold, rainy January morning. Um, I enjoyed my first big trip with my patrol over six years ago. That was a 50-mile hike that Ian talked about in the Pasatan Wilderness. Uh, we had many good times talking about Pokemon and playing the famed card game Mao, <laughs> among other things, there are many inside jokes developed on that famed trip. Um, I returned many times to Manning Park in the Mountaineers Lodge. Uh, I skied and I played in the snow with my friends, and we loved to see just how far we could launch ourselves off the jumps without mortally injuring ourselves. <coughs> um, I also have the privilege to travel 10 hours north into Canada to go on that 81 mile circuit, uh, the Byron Lake circuit. Um, we fished and we swam. We talked about cars and music for hours. Two things I never knew that my two friends, Ian and Kristoff, knew so much about. But I came along with that trip knowing a lot more about it. And as Ian said, we got to see the Northern Lights the third night, which was truly a fascinating experience. Um, last year in 2017, I got to travel with 60 other kids from the Mount Baker Council to the 2017 National Jamboree, where I had fun riding BMX bikes, zip lining, whitewater rafting, rock climbing, and most importantly, patch trading. Um, I even had the chance to see President Donald Trump speak uh, later in the week. Uh, he spoke for 40 minutes. It was really interesting to get to see him uh, speak there. And uh, also, I made many friends, some of which I still keep in touch with now. Hi back there. <laughs> they, they showed up. <laughs> um, additionally, I attended many meetings. I served as quartermaster, ASPL, NSPL, and I played many, many games of trash cam <laughs> early on in you know, my scouting career. So I think most importantly, what scouting has done for me, I mean, it's definitely had an integral part of my life. It shaped me in many different ways, but I tried to put it into words for the first time in my life, and it actually made me realize how much it's done for me. So, I guess from the beginning it's gotten me to go outside, especially in society today. We're not going outside as much, and I feel like that was really important for me as I fostered a love of outdoors, and uh, it always encouraged me to like try new things, because we're naturally inclined to stay inside. And Scotty put me out there. Um, additionally, it put me in uncomfortable positions that um, I wasn't sure if I'd be able to make it through um, until I actually just did them. Uh, I didn't know that I'd be holding a 40-pound backpack and carrying it for seven days and 50 miles, but I ended up doing it, and it ended up being one of the most uh, 
valuable experiences in my life. And uh, because of this, I've just learned to say yes to more things that I'm unsure about. If, if I have doubts, just, just say yes and see how it is, see how the outcome is. And that's worked out really well for me. Um, it also taught me that I love to volunteer and that it's also mutually beneficial to volunteer. Uh, while the community benefits, it also makes you feel really, really good. <laughs> so, I really appreciated that about my scouting career helping in ego work parties and other various projects. Um, it also taught me just how to work hard and how to manage my time. Uh, especially last year, my junior year of high school, I was managing AP classes, friendships, relationships, taking tests, preparing for college, along with uh, my Eagle Scout projects, um, and I just really had to learn how to buckle down and get it done and manage my time, and somehow, somewhere in there, figure out how to relax, which, I don't know if that ended up happening, but I'm through it, so we don't need to think about that anymore. Um, so as concisely as possible, I guess this is what I've taken out of scouting. Help yourself, but don't forget to help others. Relax, but know how to maintain focus. Go outside. Pace yourself, speak loudly and clearly, listen to people, but listen to yourself as well. Do good work, have fun, meet your goals no matter how long it takes, make new friends, control your own future, and make your own decisions. And be prepared. Uh, I just want to thank you guys one last time. Um, everybody here, you're really important to me. So, thank you. Um, First of all, I just wanted to thank you all for coming. Really appreciate it. And, uh, let's get into this. Uh, thank you for thank you all for coming today. Uh, I started my journey with Scouts starting in 2007, in first grade. I started at Pack Five and transferred to Pack Sixteen because there were larger groups of activities with. As luck would have it, this is where I met the Deaterings. Mr. Deatering became an important leader and mentor to me. When I started Boy Scouts, Mr. Rink was the Scoutmaster. He was very friendly, welcoming, and a good leader. He took extra time to spend with me and taught me how to taught me how scouting worked. He smiled a lot and told jokes that were funny. Thank you for your guidance, Mr. Rink. Mr. Hankman replaced Mr. Rink as Scoutmaster. Mr. Hankman is a strong man and a good listener. He is the most integrity filled man I know. He is honest, moral, trustworthy, respectful, and very loyal. He always provided me with good advice and quality leadership. I appreciate your commitment and guidance over my many years in Scouts. You have given so much time to our troop, scouting events, Eagle projects, and our community as a whole. Always doing the right thing, you are an amazing man. Mr. Dietering was our patrol leader when I started at Troop 7. He is, he is the kindest, most patient man I have ever known. He explained procedures and show, showed me how to tie knots and taught me so much about the outdoors. You are my biggest mentor because, mentor because of the man you genuinely are. You are my, oh, I'm sorry. You have all of the scout characteristics and then some. You spent so much time with me teaching me about scouts and demonstrating their values. You advised, you advised me and patiently guided me through every step of the way. It was you, Mr. Jeterin, who truly laid the foundation for my commitment of, to scouts because of the values you taught me and showed me, and showed me how to be a man. Speaking of Mr. Dietering, hiking the 20-miler with him was one of my longest days in my scouting career. It was a very cold, wet Mar March day in 2013. It was raining horizontally when Mr. Dietering and I, Mr. Kenner, and Noah Klinner started up the path of a very long day. It was a very long, challenging day, but I made it through. Soaking wet, blisters on my feet, and barely able to walk under the step, I fell into camp at the end of 20 miles. I was never so happy to smell food and feel the warmth of the fire. Miss, Mrs. Hankman was so kind, she brought me a delicious plate of ribs that they had made and a big, t big tasty plate of food. I was so hungry and it tasted so good. I ate it and fell asleep with exhaustion at the picnic table. I woke up the next morning in a tent and I'm not sure how I got there. <laughs> Some of my most memorable memories are car camping with my dad. A snow caving trip with Mr. Dietering, my 20 mile hike with Mr. Dietering, inner tubing at the Mountaineers Lodge, the zip lining, and horseback riding with my mom. My 50 mile hike was also memorable, specifically because I had to wait three years after joining Boy Scouts to do the 50 miler, uh, because I weighed as much as my pack did when I started, when the 50 miler is usually done. My favorite badges were rifle shooting and bow and arrow shooting. 
My dad helped me with rifle shooting and taught me how to be a safe gun and rifle handler. He also taught me excellent shooting skills and learning how to make a bow was fun. Shooting arrows and hitting the targets was a blast. My Eagle project was the most challenging because it took so long. It required a lot of coordination and lots of paperwork. It took almost a year to get it done. I wanted to thank you, Mr. Leedy, for guiding, for guiding me, for keeping me on track. I couldn't have done it without you. You were a great teacher about advancement and taught me so much about citizenship in the community and nation. Lastly, I want to thank my mother who supported me and helped me throughout my scouting years. She took me to all the meetings and as many events as possible. As a single mom, she has always been there for me and dedicated most of her spare time to be successful in life and scouts. She always told me, finish what you start. I got lucky to have you as a mom and I am forever grateful for you. Thank you, mom. I have learned a tremendous amount through scouting over 11 years. I have learned knowledge about the outdoor skills, safety skills, leadership skills, and community contribution. I'm grateful for all the lessons learned. Thank you, Troop 7, and for all the people who have helped me along the way. The Eagle Scouts have their neckerchiefs, as you can see, and they have the rank of Eagle on their chest. But their mothers, who worked so hard to get them here, have uh, their special ribbon that they will now pin upon the table. The parents' pins are just show that the parents have worked almost as hard as their scout has to get them where they are today. <coughs> Congratulations, family of Eagle Scouts. on their scouting career. And each of these boys spent a lot of time thinking, pondering, trying to politically figure out who to not insult or who to... <laughs> I'm, I'm sure there's some plotting that went on in the background. Um, and uh, we'd like to have their mentors come up. Would you guys like to introduce them yourselves or like me to? Yes. Okay. So my mentor is my father, Mr. Aaron Hinkman. Uh, he has had a large effect on not only my scouting career, but I know the scouting crews of many. Um, and he has gone on many outings and supported me every step of the way. And he's probably gone on more outings than I have because there were ones that I wasn't able to go to and he still went to support other people. So that is why I would like to recognize him. 
Uh, my mentor is the MC, Lance Pleedy, um, or Blue's dad. Um, he's been with me, as I said, since first grade. He was the den chief uh, of my tiger den in Troop 4019, or Pack 4019, sorry. Um, and he's been there all the way. He was my ego coach um, and has coached me everywhere in between and has always been just another smiling face along the way. So I'd like to thank you. Uh, my mentor is uh, Brett Dietering. Uh, he was the start, uh, the Massasagas. The first uh, pack, uh, pack that I was in, uh, lots of people, and you were a great mentor, and you changed my life forever, especially on the 20 mile. That was a big day. <laughs> Chair, would you please step forward to give the Eagle charge? Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, before I start, we're almost done. I want to thank uh, Mr. Levy again. He, uh, as most most volunteers for scouting, is very dedicated, and he came from an ordered to arrow outing, got home barely in time to get here and change, and went from one. Boy Scout out into the next, and he's doing a great job, so thank you very much. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, we're almost done. Small important part. Though. <laughs> so I'll read a little bit to you guys. The Eagle rank in Boy Scouts not only signifies a great deal of effort and hard work, as you've heard, on the part of the Scout, but it also affirms certain obligations to remain for a lifetime. This is an oath of responsibility to reaffirm the Scout's own beliefs within the ideals of scouting, citizenship, fitness, and character. Eagle Scouts, Ian, Sam, Austin, I charge you to live with honor. The Eagle's honor is sacred, for it's a foundation of all character. Character is what you are really are deep down inside. To show honor, you must be trustworthy. From this day forward, you will be held to a higher code of honor and ethics than many of your peers. Honor is truly the measure of a man. May the white on your badge remind you to live in honor. I charge you to be loyal. Without loyalty, all character lacks direction. An eagle is as loyal as his ideals, no matter how difficult the task. He is loyal to family, friends, community, nation, and to himself. The blue on your badge is a reminder to be loyal. I charge you to be courageous. Courage gives all character force and strength. Have the courage to stand up for what is right. Trust in God and have faith in your fellow man. Face each day unafraid, striving to do your part in all things, regardless of adversity. Let the red on your, the red on your badge remind you to always live a courage. I charge, you, I charge you to give service. Be in a state of readiness, in mind and in body, to always help others. Seek your share of the world's work and what needs to be done. Continue the habit of the good turn daily and a life in service. Ian Hakeman, Sam Risser, Austin McTouch, do you accept this charge and the future responsibilities of your Eagle rank? I do. I do. I do. Excellent. Will all Scouts, you guys please rise. Will all Eagle Scouts among the guests please stand at this time to participate in the Eagle response? That gives showing of Eagle today. Excellent. All right. So we're going to renew our Eagle response in Eagle Scout Pledge. All right. So please raise your Scout sign if you remember that. So I, state your name, Eagle Scout. Ian Hickman, Sam Risser, Austin McIntosh, Crowd, Lance Deer. Please repeat after me. Realize my obligation to my fellow Eagles. Realize my obligation to my fellow Eagles. To my home, my country, and my God. To my home, my country, and my God. I will at all times do my best. I will at all times do my best. To assist others. To assist others. Live with honor. Live with honor. Loyalty, courage, and service. Loyalty, courage, and service. And be a living example, be a living example of, the law, of the Scout Oath and Law to the best of my ability. To this I pledge my sacred honor. To this I pledge my sacred honor. To, thank you, you can be seated. By the authority vested in me in the Mount Baker Council, Boy Scouts of America, it's my honor to announce, pronounce you, Ian, Sam, and Austin, Eagle Scouts. May the pledge that you've taken today remain engraved in your heart forever. 
Congratulations. Ian, Austin, and Sam. So, your names are going to be inscribed on the plaque in the scout room at St. James Presbyterian. They're going to join my name, they're going to join the other names of the scouts up here and all the other scouts. Eagle Scouts from Troop 7. So, Joe had an excellent Eagle charge. That's my favorite part of uh, any of these ceremonies. And I just want to remind you of your duty to the troop. The troop has molded you. They've helped instill the scout values in you. There's a lot of people in this room, especially the scouts that helped you with your Eagle projects, the uh, work labor, I believe it was called. <laughs> and, um, I, you know, I want, I want to make sure that you guys give back. Give back to the troop, help these other scouts get Eagle Scouts. If you're away at college and you're not able to help out a troop seven, help out another troop. I know you're going to be busy, you can't make every meeting, you can't make every trip, but do what you can because uh, you know your leadership will show a lot. It shows these young scouts up here that I sat with, they could be here too. So um, I just want to, want to make sure to remind you of that. I'm pleased to have your name uh, join mine on the plaque. I look forward to seeing it the next time I'm at a scout meeting. And um, with that, I would like to close this Eagle Scout Court of Honor. Thank you. Thank you, Derek. Oh, Derek, please step forward. Will the audience please rise? Color Guard, attention. Color Guard, retrieve the colors. Color Guard, retreat. Sky and salute. Color guard halt. Color guard is missed. Ice is missed. Figure out the snack.